Okay, well, thanks for coming this rainy, uh, rainy Wednesday. Um, but year six for our staff, and uh, we couldn't be more excited about uh, where our team is. And uh, I think we're 12 practices in right now. Uh, we've learned a lot, and uh, we've got a long ways to go as well. But uh, I feel a little bit of a sense of urgency just because of how we, our schedule kind of un unfolds. We, we uh, start with Iowa State on the 13th of November, so we got to be ready to go uh, and have a lot of work to do between now and then. But I like this team. I like the makeup. I love the chemistry. I love the camaraderie. And I think we've got a chance to, uh, to do some damage in the Pac-12. I do, yeah. I, I, uh, it's funny, uh, going through some numbers and some t statistics, I was looking at our three-point field goal percentage defense, which over the last two years has not been very good. I think we were eighth in the league and tenth in the league over the last two years. Three years ago, we were first in the league in that category. And, and you start looking at your personnel, and you say, okay, we had Spencer Dinwiddie and Andre Roberson on the perimeter. As defensive players, that might have had something to do with it. I think it did. Um, so we've changed a few things in terms of how we're guarding, uh, not necessarily the, the basic philosophies, but just to um, stand closer to three-point shooters so that you know uh, puts a little more premium on guarding the ball. Um, really working on uh, guarding the ball without fouling. I think with the new uh, the new rules, in college basketball, you know, the officiating. Um, emphasis that's going into this season is they want to take the physicality out of college basketball so we're trying to really uh, work on position defense and playing with our feet and playing without fouling because I think you're going to see a lot of fouls early in the season but I, I like where the mentality of this team is defensively um, we've got some deficiencies we've got some players right now that we have to bring up to speed and, and quite frankly um, some liabilities defensively right now, but hopefully we can shore those up uh, in in, uh, in quick fashion. Coach, you mentioned the improved camaraderie. Was that something you could sense was lacking a little bit last year? And you know, is it something that you've seen a dramatic difference with, with this year's group? Well, yeah, it's it's good. I mean, and again, uh, adversity kind of uh, shows all your your warts. And uh, when we faced adversity last year, we weren't the most cohesive group and together group. And I think, well, look, we're going to face adversity this year as well. And uh, um, I think that's when leadership comes in. I look at what Josh Scott, you know, has been doing, you know, on the floor and off the floor with his teammates. I think he's the unquestioned leader of this team. I've got great faith and belief in him uh, and what he's about. And so hopefully when adversity hits this year, this, this group can come together and galvanize together rather than maybe uh, not. And I don't think last year's team did a great job of that. And uh, when you guys were around, you saw it. Um, hopefully this year's team will. Because adversity will hit. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And, uh, but that's where I think the character and the makeup of your team really gets tested. And I, I, I feel good about that this year. I really do. You know, Thomas Akiazili is, is uh, I, I'm really pleased um, with, you know, where he is um, relative to all the things that he's, that's being thrown at him. I mean, he's, um, everything's new to him, you know, being in a new country, being on a new campus, being in a new university, and, and uh, everything is new. And he's, uh, he's really processing it well. He's very coachable. He's in the gym all the time. And uh, he wants to be good. So I think Thomas, you know, over the course certainly of the season and over the course of his career is going to just get better and better and better. Again, uh, the character and the makeup that he's got and, and the work, work ethic. How quickly can he acclimate to the college game? You know, I'm not sure yet. You know, there's, uh, it's, it's a work in progress. But I, I really like kind of his mindset. I, 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 that's the one thing I think. I like about him the most is his mindset and his coachability, and he'll he'll be a good player at Colorado before it's all said and done. But I I don't want people to expect too much in terms of production. Um, but he does a great job of running our team. He's a good quarterback. He's vocal, and uh, it's a great start.
Coach, a couple weeks ago, Don Ross in the CBS Sports reported that uh, he said George King was probably going to be the starter in place of Xavier Johnson. A couple weeks into practice, is that something that you said by? Uh, it's too early to, to really say that. You know, George King's certainly certainly going to be in our rotation. There's no doubt. Um, you know, I'm not in a position right now where I'm going to name a starting five. And again, that that can be a very fluid thing throughout the season. Um, and uh, you know, it's not who starts the game; it's who finishes the game. And I think, uh, but George is certainly a weapon and a matchup uh, issue I think, for opposing teams because he's got a skill set that can. That can really make it difficult for the opponent. I mean, he's so big and strong. You know, a perimeter player, he can he can get them to the rim and even post them up and overpower them. Uh, he can take big guys away from the basket. He shoots the ball well from the perimeter. Um, you know, the biggest thing with George is making good decisions with the basketball, not doing, trying to do too much, and playing within himself. If he plays within himself and starts to understand, you know, where is his advantage given the matchups. Uh, he's going to be a heck of a player, and uh, but I, I'm I'm really excited about George, uh, and uh, I'm glad we got him for three more years. I mean, his red shirt, even though you know there was part of me that did not want him to red shirt last year, there's part of him that didn't want a red shirt. I think in the in the end, it's going to be a great decision, you know, much like Wesley's Gord Wesley Gordon's was. Coach, it's no secret that last year was slightly disappointing for you guys. What what gives you the most hope, and what's changed the most this year that you can? Well, I think it starts with our front line. I think, you know, I, I really, I look at our front line. I look at Josh Scott. I look at Wesley Gordon. I know how good Wesley can be. Uh, his talent level is unquestioned. Um, you know, what we need is more consistency out of Wesley this year. And I look at Torrey Miller uh, as a guy who uh, is probably our most improved player, quite frankly, from last year to this year, uh, given the first few weeks of practice, what I've seen. He's made great strides, not only with his body, uh, but with his uh, his mindset as well. Again, he's not the finished product yet, but he's he's really uh, he's made made great strides. And then Kenan Kazusevich, you know, who's one of our new um, players as well, gives us a kind of a stretch four, a pick and pop type guy. Again, he's a guy that's a work in progress. He's probably had the most difficulty in uh, acclimating to the new. New style and, and, and much like Thomas has, but he's uh, he's gonna be a good player. So I think those four guys, our front line, our bigs, I, I feel very very good about. I think the the question mark with our team comes on the perimeter you know, because we did lose a Skia, who was a very explosive player, experienced player, productive player. Um, we've got capable players out there, but they've you know they're they're unproven up to this point. Is it tough in the college game to make sure? That your big men are getting enough touches down. That's going to be a, a key to this team. I mean, we are going to play inside out. We, there's no question about it. And, and uh, that doesn't always mean post touches. It can be, you know, but but Josh Scott, <coughs> Wesley Gordon, Tori, those guys have got to see the ball. Uh, if not on every possession, certainly every other possession. I mean, they, we got we got to play through them. There's no doubt. And. You know, in, in basketball, it's, it's kind of like football. You know, you got the running game and the passing game. You know, the best teams have a balance between the two. Um, basketball is the same way. You got an inside presence. You got uh, a perimeter presence. And and uh, the better the inside presence, the easier it is on those perimeter guys. The more open shots they get. Uh, and then uh, the one thing I think with this year's team, relative to last year's, is we're going to be able to stretch the defense. I think we've got we'll be a better perimeter shooting team this year than we were last year. And uh, uh, that that should that should open it up for those inside guys as well. Ted, those new rules, it does yeah. seem like that's really a thing. Yes. <laughs> How do you are there ways to prepare to bring more officials? Do you do that sort of thing? Yeah, you know, that's one of the things, you know, we we the NCAA allows you either two exhibitions or two uh, Close scrimmages. We've gone the the close scrimmages route, and uh, you know the nice thing about that is the officials in those scrimmages. They're you know they're not in front of fans either. They don't have to worry about the TV cameras, and so they can talk to your guys. They can communicate with them. You can stop play. You can have them explain, hey, this is this is why that was a foul, or this is why that wasn't a foul, or whatever the case may be. Um, and it allows you know the the learning curve hopefully to uh, to flatten a little bit and. Uh, 
but I'm concerned with these new rules in terms of, especially early in the season, the effect that they're going to have on the game. And uh, I think the, the thought process is, hey, we're going to take the physicality out of college basketball, so we're going to call a lot more fouls early. And that gets in the officials' mindset, and guess what? That's going to happen. And whether, whether the game's physical or not physical, I mean, it's, I think that the tendency is they're going to blow that whistle quicker because they're being asked to, or they're being told to, you know. And so it worries me a little bit. I mean, in terms of, you know, just ticky-tack fouls that, you know, might put a guy like Josh Scott on the bench in the first half for, uh, for 10 minutes, which we don't want. Um, and that's, uh, so that, that concerns me a little bit. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll adjust to it. And again, I hope, um, it's, it's something that's here and we're going to have to deal with. But uh, the new rules do, do concern me a little bit. You know, coaches can't call timeouts anymore. Now players have to call timeouts. I mean, there's a lot of uh, the 30-second shot clock. I mean, there's, there's a, it seems like more new rules this year than whenever any time I've coached in college. Well, what's been your impression of Derek so far? Derek Thomas? Derek White. Or Derek, Derek Thomas. Derek White. Derek, I'm thinking my foot, thinking football here. Uh, Derek Thomas is, or Derek, Derek Thomas. Derek White is uh, he's a terrific player, um, and uh, you know I, I don't want to get too excited because we only you know we don't get him for a year from now. But I think he's got the strength, he's got the speed, he's got the skill, he's got the feel. Um, uh, he's going to be a heck of a player for us, and uh, I wish God, I wish we had him this year. Um, and I'll be saying that a lot to myself, not necessarily to you guys. But Derek is uh, uh, very coachable. Uh, the thing I love about him is he's, uh, he's very energetic. And he has a great feel for the game that you can't coach. Um, but you guys are going to really, really enjoy watching him play next year. And I just, I'm sick to my st stomach. We don't have him for two years. We we'll only get him for one. But he's going to be a terrific, terrific player. Terrific so back 12 few, player. He had so few bucks. The guys... He was, yeah. Is that just a case where a guy makes a huge leap? Yes, yeah, you know, absolutely. It's it's the classic late bloomer. Uh, grad, I think he I think he was six one when he graduated from high school, and now he's six five. And yeah, he was a, he was a good high school player, but yeah, he was. I mean, how many how many Division one schools are here in this? Uh, you know, Rocky Mountain region. You got Air Force and Northern Colorado and Denver and Colorado, Colorado State, Wyoming, and not one of us even considered it. And now, <laughs> oh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a neat story. And uh, anybody he's a terrific young man. He's a hard worker. He's a great teammate. He's very humble, uh, but he's, I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll be a pro. There's no question. He's a professional. He's, he's a professional basketball player when he leaves here. Now, what level? You know, that'll yet be yet yet to be determined. But he's a he's a terrific player. Ted, you said after last year that you were going to be a lot more demanding on this team through the offseason and as well as continue here and preseason. But have you been? And how has the team maybe accepted that change? Yeah, you know, it would be a good question. I think for our players um, when when you talk to them. I don't, yeah, I do know, you know, we did conditioning in the spring, which we'd never done since I'd been here. I mean, we, ran, we ran, we got in shape, we, we worked harder in the spring. We had our players here in the month of June and July. Normally we do the month of June, let them go home in July and get a break. Uh, but we kept them here all summer. Um, so we've done some things differently in, in the off offseason. Uh, and I think, uh, and in this fall, I feel like certainly in the, in the first 12 practices, I've been more dialed in and engaged, and you know I don't know if I've been tougher or meaner, but I think I try. What I'm trying to do is be consistent, you know, every day. And I think last year, you know, I made a lot of mistakes last year, and one of them was, you know, I figured, okay, we've had guys in this program who've won, who've proven that they can win. Um, they'll figure it out as time goes on. I'll kind of let them, you know, kind of learn. Uh, and, and guess what? Never happened. And that falls on me as a head coach. And so I'm not going to let that happen this year. You know, if, if I see something that's not right, I'm not, I'm not going to ask our players to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. It sounds like you mentioned the first sort of off the first conversation with a sense of urgency because of that first game of the 
Yeah. Is there also a sense of urgency just around the entire program? A lot of schools in this conference look like they're getting better. Is this a real big year for Colorado basketball? Every year is a big year. I mean, it's, this is this is no bigger than last year. You know, no bigger than next year's going to be. I mean, it's every year is a big year, and and uh, this league is good. It's more balanced. It may not be quite as top heavy. You know, we don't have that top five program right now. Last year, Arizona, I think, was a top, you know, number one, number two program in the country going into the season. But I think we've got more good teams in the league this year than in years past. So it's going to be a heck of a league race. Um, you know, that's, that doesn't start till January 1 when we open up at Cal. Um, but uh, I, don't, you know, I don't feel any more pressure or less pressure now than in years past. But I do think this. I think you know, we've had some success since we've been here. Last year was a down year. You know, uh, I don't mind saying I, I, I feel like I failed last year. Uh, I think our players feel that way too. And that's not a good feeling you want in the, in the, in the pit of your stomach you know, when you go to bed at night. And uh, so I think our players are committed to make, make sure that doesn't happen again. I know I'm committed to it, and uh, it's not going to be easy because there are, there are some good teams in this league. But uh, I, I like our chances. I, you know, if we play together um, and we play uh, team basketball and we're committed to each other, there's not a team in this league we can't beat. Uh, 30 second shot clock does not change much about our offense. I think what it does is maybe change us defensively a little bit. We're playing around with, uh, you know, some soft presses. We're playing around with more switching. We're, uh, we certainly want teams to get deeper in the shot clock because I think you know, college players, you know, unlike NBA players, don't operate as well with five or six seconds that thing's ticking down you see more panic set in with college players and um, so offensively we still want to push it score fast I'd like to be scoring the first 12 to 15 seconds of the shot clock defensively you know um, I told our guys you know the good news is we got to play rock solid defense for 30 seconds now last year we had to play rock solid defense for 35 seconds and so it should be easier Big, big year for Dom. It's a big year for him. Um, going from his freshman year to sophomore year, I've always said I think the greatest strides you know, college basketball players make is usually between their freshman year and their sophomore year. That's when the, um, they understand what the game's about. They made their freshman mistakes. They, they address those over the summer, and they get better. And uh, hopefully Dom is, is one of those players that, that figures that out. Um, if you see him physically, He's bigger, he's stronger, he's 185 pounds now. So he's, he's, Coach Hardy's done a great job with him in the offseason. Dom's done a great job getting in a weight room and, and getting more mass to his frame. And uh, now what he has to do is start running the team. And the biggest challenge I've given Dom Collier uh, early here this season is to be vocal. He's not a vocal guy by nature. He's not a guy who runs his mouth and talks a lot, but guess what, when you're the quarterback on the basketball team, you better open up your mouth and you have to open up your mouth. He's getting better at that. Um, now, can he do it in the game, start directing people? That's going to be the challenge. And that's, that's uh, the challenge that, that we've given him. So he's, look, he's got a great feel for the game. He understands the game. He's really good in the open floor. Um, Dom can make plays for himself and for others. So uh, I don't think his talent is questioned. Um, the big question mark with him is, can he take that vocal leadership role and run with it? Coach, um, last season you said you know, that this team was close to avoid the leadership. You mentioned earlier that Josh Scott is the young question leader in this team that has the challenge down to make more vocal. Is there anyone on this team right now that has kind of filled that role already of being a vocal leader alongside Josh? Uh, not alongside Josh, no, not yet. Um, and that's, you know, that's something that's going to have to emerge because it, it's, it's hard for Josh to do it all by himself. And, uh, you know, one of the things I love to do this time of year is I love to bring in outside coaches um, to our practices and just have them observe 
um, because it gives me a, like an, uh, an unbiased opinion of, of what's going on. You know, look, I've, I've been here six years. Our assistant coaches have been here with me, you know, uh, during that time. So, you know, we have our biases with every – we recruited these players. We know them. Somebody coming from the outside sitting in our practice for two days – they don't know the difference between George King and Josh Scott or Dom Collier. It's like it's, it's all new to them, and getting their feedback is interesting. And and one of the guys I brought in, um, this guy I respect, he's been a head coach for 19 years, and his comment to me was, outside of Josh Scott, nobody on your team talks. They're all too quiet. You know, Josh does all the talking, and and so I, you know, I shared that with our team. I shared that with our guys, and. And I thought it was really good feedback. So that's an area, again, where we have to improve. I know we have to improve, and, and uh, that's what we're working on. When you're evaluating players, I mean, every player in the group is the guy right. in high school. So how do you evaluate whether that person is a leader in a communicative sense that you respond to? How do you tell that? It's difficult. I, I think, you know, sometimes, when you see certain players, they got it. They got the, the it factor. Like you can say, oh, they've got it. I think there's there's multiple players, whether it's in high school or or even in college, that have leadership qualities and abilities, but they haven't come to the surface yet. You know, I think leadership is a. I don't know if you're born with it. I mean, maybe some people are. I don't know. It's a great philosophical question. You know, are you born a leader? Or are you are you developed into a leader? Um, but it's pretty easy when you see that and you can recruit that and you get that. Um, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie, I would put in that kind of category. I think Spencer, even when he was a sophomore, you know, he wasn't afraid to speak up. Now, he wasn't that way as a freshman. He was still kind of checking things out. But um, in some people, it takes them until maybe they're a senior. And that's where Josh Scott, he's got leadership qualities and abilities. Um, and those are now going to come to the forefront, whereas maybe as a freshman or sophomore, they didn't. And so... That's where the leadership development, I and mean, we've got a whole program within our athletic department called Leadership Development, and I think it's a great program because it teaches all of our student athletes what leadership is about, what it looks like, um, here's when it works, here's when it doesn't work. You know, you look at teams that are successful or not successful because of it um, or, or not because of the lack of it. Um, it's, it's, you know, like these kids are here to learn and grow and get better. And I think you look at a guy like Josh Scott, I think he's really developed into that. And what we need now is some of those younger guys, Dom Collier, George King, Treshawn Fletcher, to get on that same track. And that's what we're trying to do. And that, you know, before you came in, that's that's the mistake I made last year. I didn't take I didn't take the bull by the horn and say, okay, it's not here. I'm going to take it. That's the mistake I made last year as head coach. So um, I'm not going to make that this year. I'm not going to make that same mistake. Um, but I'm also going to, you know, um, hopefully, um, you know, again, I, I I've got a lot of confidence in, in Josh Scott. And, and the respect he has in that locker room that when he says something, people are going to listen to him. And I think, um, and, and, you know, we'll see how it plays out. But I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to make that same mistake again. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, look, he's rehabbing right now. Not sure. I'm not going to sit here and say he's coming back. I'm not going to sit here and say he's not coming back because I don't know that. Um, I think mid-December, mid to late December would be absolutely the earliest. And, you know, again, I always say you know, when it comes to injured players, you hope for the best, which is he comes back as soon as possible and he can help this team win. Um, you prepare for the worst, which is he's not coming back this year and he'll come back for his fifth year. We have had those conversations with, with Xavier. Um, and look, he's going to be the one that has to make that call with the doctors based on where his uh, where his injury is. But we, we're probably a couple, at least a month or two away from really knowing that. We got time for a couple more quick questions with Coach, and then we'll uh, turn it over to Coach Laffey. Any other additional brief 
one-on-ones with Coach can be taken care of outside the doors here. Well, any more questions for Coach? Tim, go back to X for a second. When you've got a guy that's got that much experience, and then he's an awful tough you know, matchup in college basketball, how do you replace that in this line? Or, or can you? Well, it's tough. I mean, you know, because you, you, you can't replace experience. That's the one thing. You can replace production, and that's, that, that's the challenge <laughs> that, that, that really falls on George King and Treshawn Fletcher and, and Josh Fortin. Josh Fortune to some degree, Cannon uh, to some degree. Look, he, what, 10, 11 points, six rebounds. We can replace that. What we can't replace is X's experience, his toughness, and, uh, and, and all the things that he's learned up to this point. So, um, look, I, I love this year's team. I look at next year's team with Derek White sitting out and Xavier Johnson. If, if he does not come back, I mean, we've got two – Pretty darn good players that are going to be coming in on to next year's team. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, if again, if XJ, XJ doesn't come back, I mean, we lose three seniors. Um, so, um, if if nothing else, the, the the stable next year is a little bit more full. And uh, but you, you, it's hard to replace experience, Mark. I mean, you just don't. I mean, if he doesn't come back, we you know, Skia, two of our top three. Scores off last year's team are back, but look, we've got. That's why you recruit. That's why you got guys sitting out. That's why you got freshmen that become sophomores. It's, it's somebody else's turn to step step up, and hopefully somebody can do that. Yeah, West, 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 West Borden's had a couple of very big flash moments you know, throughout his career. He has a pretty consistent, consistent year. That West is the consistent back. Neil, I hope so. I'm telling you, because I tell you what, he is. He's as talented. I mean, there. I look at Wes Gordon. I say, okay, why couldn't he average a double double? I mean, um, he's being more aggressive uh, offensively. He has been our, our, without a doubt, our best rebounder in practice. Certainly, and it's early. Uh, I understand that, but he is a terrific rebounder. But you know, he's had some games where it's like, wow, this guy's. It's just, it's just consistency and focus, and uh, that's a challenge for Wes. I mean, it's just that's just kind of who he is, and. and you, know, you, you hope that that light bulb comes on, so to speak, and he's there each and every night. Because if he is, you know, we know Josh is, uh, that gives you a pretty good one-two punch in that front line. And, then, you know, if we can make some shots around those guys, we'll be, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Hey, we'll go ahead and transition to the next phase. Uh, anybody else for Coach Boyle? We'll be out here momentarily while we transition over for the women. Thank you. Thanks, guys.